you should never use an air stone in your reservoir. And if that was the case, why would most hydroponic systems come with air stones in them? Whether it's the RDWC or deep water culture in general, the roots need oxygen. And the best way to do that is with air stones. Now, don't get me wrong. This is coming from a guy that said he would never use air stones because I didn't want my pH to gradually rise. That is why I, for the last year or so, I used circulation pumps. But the circulation pumps I was using, I was using a uh, wave maker. The wave maker gave out after like a few months. But let's talk why I decided to put air stones in my reservoirs. Also, this guy said a circulation pump is going to put more oxygen into the water of the reservoir, which just is not true. An air stone is meant to put oxygen directly into the water while a circulation pump is not made to do that. So while it does it, it does it less efficient. It does it less efficient and it doesn't do as good of a job. But anyway, let's talk about the the plants or the reservoir and why I decided to uh, use air stones this time. It really depends mostly on how you're growing. Uh, if you're growing in, in hydroponics, a lot of times people are going to be using a salt nutrient. If you're using just salt nutrients, it's not so much of an issue. Because as those nutrients are breaking down, it's, it's, not, it's not making anaerobic conditions like it would if you're adding something organic. Now I use King Solomon, which is a salt-based nutrient line in my reservoir. Now this is just the start. We have Photosynthesis Plus, Great White, and then Biobalancer from CA, from CH Horticulture. So this is going to be your microbes, this is going to be mycorrhizal, and this is going to be beneficial bacteria. All three of these are organic. I'm also going to be trying out this uh, Kelpit Reel from Grogantica. But anyway, what happens when you're using something like any of these organics, or even just a little bit of it, is that organic material breaks down. If you don't have oxygen in there to, for one, mycorrhizal and the, the Mycorrhizal and the microbes or the good bacteria all need good oxygen to survive and do good. If you have low oxygen levels, those, uh, those things kind of die or taper off. And when they do is when you get anaerobic conditions. You got a stale environment with no air in the water whatsoever and the bad bacteria just take over. And what that does is make your whole entire reservoir kind of like all sludgy. You get some thick stuff that can happen in there. Everything turns kind of yellow and it gets like pasted with stuff. Now you're saying that the pH with the air stone is going to make the water rise, but using the circulation pump and then having the, the and then having that organic stuff breaking down with no with not enough oxygen in there, making the anaerobic conditions is going to make your pH dramatically drop. I mean not drop, it fluck around. Because my pH, I was setting it, brand new water, brand new nutrients, I was setting it at 5.6. That way it could drift up just a little bit. By the next day, probably about eight hours later, I was already at 7.1, 7.2. And that, so literally, me going to bed, I would come down here right before bedtime, I would do this, and then the first thing in the morning, about eight o'clock, nine o'clock, I would come back and I would do this. And it would be up every single day. But now I added the air stones in here. I started with new fluid or new water last night with new nutrients. I put about 10, 15 gallons in there, and I set it at 5.6. I came in this morning, a whole, 10 hours, whatever later, no different from any other day that I would do it and come back and be at 7.0. Now it is at 6.1. And going from a 5.6 to 6.1 is way more manageable than going from 5.6 to 7.1 to 7.2. But like I said, if I was using just salt-based nutrients and not adding anything organic with it, I wouldn't have the same problem. And I could probably get away with just using a circulation pump. Now, while you can't have really too much oxygen, it does happen sometimes, but it's hard to get it. Uh, in these kind of conditions, the more oxygen you have, the more that uh, more the the water's the pH is going to rise. And this pump is set for a, it's strong enough to mix up the whole 50 gallons uh, that that could be in here. So last night, also, or actually this morning when I came back in, I turned these down just a little bit to give it a little bit less oxygen in there. See if I can get it to uh, not rise as fast as what it did even though that's way more acceptable than, like I said, jumping from such a 6.0 to a 7.0. Now back to the part of you really can't get the, the too much oxygen in these kinds of systems. Uh, sometimes you can, if you do, it can make uh, your nutrient solution kind of foam up. If you ever see it like foaming up really bad, then you have too much. Like I'm talking about foaming up like a, a bubble bath. And another potential thing to, to look out for if your water is pH is rising is your water temperature. My water temperature is also just a little bit too, it's on the warm side. I'm at about 70 degrees, my room temp 70 degrees. You really want it under, underneath 72 or, or under 70, 65, 70, it's a sweet spot I think. But the water temp is another thing that can make your, your pH rise.